basically we've taken everything we've learned about wireless in the last four decades and we've packed it into this thing. You know, there's more and more desire for uh, high channel counts, superb audio quality. There's more and more audio over IP type uh, systems going on, so it has that as well. We didn't want to abandon our existing user base. You know, so many new systems come along and it's like a break from the past, you know, and it's new technology that's wonderful, better performance or whatever features you can get in there, but it doesn't, it's not compatible with anything that came before. Hey, thanks for coming back. We've got Carl Winkler of Electrosonics on the channel once again today, and I've held on to this one for a little bit because Carl is so popular at the trade shows that a whole bunch of other people uh, want to see what he's got going on. So I waited a little while to put this one together, and it's a really neat look at the new D-squared receiver. Absolute ton of features inside these. My interest with this was not just to see it and get the first-hand look at a new product from Carl in person, which is awesome, but to also find out from him who they aim the products at and then who ends up using them and how they end up using them and all the neat ways that everybody out there gets the gear to do the things they needed to do because ultimately that's what this is all about. So let's jump in with Carl and see what he's got in the new D squared receiver. When Digital Hybrid came out 15 years ago, the idea was, hey, there's a lot of 200 series analog dual band companion systems out there. So we thought Digital Hybrid gives us a way to accommodate those folks and move forward. So we've done that again. This is a digital receiver, but it has digital hybrid compatibility mode. So every transmitter we've made in the last 15 years can still be used with this system. So to your question about who it's aimed at, really it's aimed at a wide variety of users. I mean, being a rack unit, you could argue that, well, it's, it's probably not destined to be a camera mount receiver, okay? That eliminates that. But from there, I see bag users uh, using this system. We've seen that already on social media. People are putting these things in bags. Uh, and as a rack unit, like uh, in a studio, a TV studio, in a church, on a tour, this is a 12 volt DC powered. So you could power it off a central DC system. Uh, and we make power supplies like a rack redundant power supply called the RPS4. So really, any way you can get 12 volts into it, and enough current and it'll work. So there's really a number of different places where we expect this to go and provide high performance uh, radio. The sound quality, as I mentioned, is superb. It's 24-bit digital, uh, 48 kilohertz sample rate in the digital transmitters, like the DBU and the, uh, the DHU. These are the two new transmitters that go with the system. And these should look familiar. You know, they look like an LT and they look like an HHA. And how you tell them apart is DBU, it says it on there, and on this one, it's a gray foot instead of a blue foot on the bottom of the antenna. Then one further thing that you can get with digital now is encryption, and that's important for certain kinds of clients. Sometimes filmmakers uh, find that important if they don't want the script to leak, you know, for a, a big deal of their season finale or the movie version of Breaking Bad, not that there is one, I'm just saying if there was, you know, they would want that to, the script to be secret. Corporate clients, government clients, you name it. And, and so this has got 256-bit uh, AES CTR encryption, which is pretty much the gold standard. So that's another thing you can get with the digital transmitters that you can't get with any kind of analog system. Overall, rack compactness, four channels in a half rack space, gives you up to eight channels in one rack space. That's double the density of pretty much anything else out there. The menu structure, you know, is designed to be very user-friendly with uh, kind of color-coded areas as well as a quick access menu giving you, you know, a quick look at most of the stuff that you're going to change all the time. And there's another route in, the channel detail view. I push that channel one button and now I can see the frequency, 10 seconds of history, my audio level, mute status, my compatibility mode, and all that. So enormous amount of detail at just the push of a button. We've got some shortcuts in there like infrared sync. If I were to uh, turn on my transmitter here and I want to sync it to this first channel, all I do is push and hold and it's synced. We made it not complex. It, it should be very easy to use. So that's the, the hardware itself. And let me uh, talk about the software for a minute as well, because this is really a key component for any larger system. Wireless Designer is software we started developing in 2014, and uh, now it's reached a new point in evolution because we have a native Mac app for it and native PC app. 
used to require Silverlight, which was, you know, Silverlight support went away from Microsoft. Now uh, it's native on the Mac, native on the PC. This software, what it does is it'll do a local scan using your receivers, and then you can do your frequency coordination where uh, you're picking your channels based on a mathematic calculation. For instance, here we see a bunch of conflicts based on other things going on in the room as well as third order intermod. And all I have to do is coordinate selected channels and it's now chosen good channels. And I can deploy to my system and now my receivers are tuned. It's that easy. Now from there, we're gonna monitor all of our channels on this, uh, this screen here. And this is scalable, you know, so I can fit all my channels on a single screen. This shows you a stack, right? So in this session, we have a DSQD and a DR, and that's our previous generation encrypted digital. We could have the M2 system, we could have venue 2s, all in this stack, all monitoring all channels at once. So coordinate all your frequencies together with your inners, your IFBs, your wireless mics. That's what wireless design is. Very, very powerful uh, tool for setting up and monitoring your wireless system. So that's what, why it's exciting. That's why we're here. And we're getting a lot of traffic uh, to take a look at this system. Thanks again to Carl for giving us the time and giving us a quick look at the D squared. I really hope to get that one here in the shop. There is so much going on in there, way too much to cover in a trade show, but it would be really fun to get to plug that one in and show you what it can do. So hopefully we can do that in the future. Thanks to everybody who has helped get set up here in the new shop space. Uh, the founder's wall is coming along nicely. And if you want to get involved on that and help do things like treat this space acoustically, which I'm sure you can hear it desperately needs, there are links for that down in the description below and on the homepage, dcsoundop.com. And thanks so much to Electrosonics who does support this channel and provides the little PDR recorders that I use to record normally. And just as soon as we do get this space acoustically treated, I'll be back to using an Omni Lavalier microphone. But for right now, a directional mic seems to be the best choice because there is no treatment almost at all. But the founders whose names will be going up on this wall in the next couple of days have contributed. It's amazing to see so many people reach out and support what I'm doing here and to help get things set up a little nicer so we can all have some better content and make it easier and faster to make more. So thanks so much. Keep an eye out on social media if you don't follow along for updates on the founders wall and if you want to get your name on it links are everywhere on the homepage in the description patreon paypal search dc sound up anywhere you go and you'll find me i'll see you soon